Okay, now that you've finished crunching on that ice, mm -hmm. yeah. your Coke. Another one of my traits that annoys you. No, no, I love it. By the way, I can hear it two doors down. I can hear it two rooms down. Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome again to Mommy's Happy Hour. I hope you've all had a good start to the year so far. I know 2020 was a difficult year for many people, for most of us actually, but I hope there were some highlights too. For me, I finally hit the publish button on this show, kicking off Mommy's Happy Hour with my husband as my first guest. And by popular demand, he's back again for our first episode of 2021. And just like last time, it wasn't without its hiccups, and I had to reschedule a few times before we got to record it. But what can I say? We wanted to chat about what the year was like for us and what we hope for 2021. But as you'd expect, we meandered a little bit. Specifically around the announcement of Harry and Megan's podcast, which we listened to together last week. And we actually have some advice and a little challenge for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Also, I'd love to hear what you think of the episode. Please give us a shout on Instagram at Mommy's Happy Hour. Okay, well, you know that you're back by popular demand. I know I'm flattered, actually. I'm a little bit nervous also because I, don't, I never thought that I was very... No, come on. ...popularly demanded. <laughs> no, no, you were, you, were, you were really funny. Our first episode was, was lots of fun. Yeah, it was nice. It was good. So, we're back. 2020 is behind us. Thank God. We're now in 2021. I wanted to start off by saying I'm very happy to know that Harry, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have launched their own podcast. And when I read the headline, it said, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle launch podcast, listen to their cute interaction. Okay, so I was thinking to myself, just how cute are they? Are they cuter than us? Well, in our, on our good days, of course. We listened to that podcast together, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I don't know what they're referring to, their cute interaction, because there wasn't, there wasn't very much interaction. So I was like, damn, we're better than them. Anyways, that was one, that was my first initial thought. But actually, when I listened to the podcast, I was kind of thinking they were talking about their takeaway for 2020 and they had, but it wasn't their takeaway. This is, this is what I was surprised about because I actually was more interested in, and I would think most people would be most interest, more interested in hearing about their actual, probably experience of 2021, 2020, I mean, as opposed to other people's experiences okay they had they had very interesting guests but it wasn't enough to they nobody no not one guest elaborated enough to kind of feel that connection it just it, i think to me it just it felt a little impersonal it felt impersonal i certainly agree with one thing they said for sure we underestimated before 2020 the 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 power of human connection about that face-to-face -face kind of connection and that it's just, I think that was what was so depressing about 2020. Even though, having said that, though, we were much, much better off than people around the world in Egypt. Yeah, we weren't because so locked down here. We weren't so locked down. And so we were able to interact with people. I don't know. So what are your takeaways from 2020? What do you, what do you think? I mean, what do you think were the best moments and like the worst moments? Um, wow. So it feels like such a long year that's gone by so fast. It's, um, yeah, you know, obviously there's, um, you know, the year of the pandemic. I mean, um, I guess like not knowing at the very beginning, like what this actually is and like, uh, you know, how it affects people and you worry about your kids. And I think, I think that was probably the worst moment for me where you just kind of felt like a little bit helpless. Um, and then, you know, I spent the first, I think maybe month or two, like glued to the news, obviously, uh, until I realized that it sort of started to depress me. And so I actually, uh, I actually decided that uh, I would become uh, more ignorant to, as to what's going on. And I tried to just uh, stay away from, uh, you know, watching TV and, and, and following the numbers. And, uh, uh, and I found that, uh, you know, I, I found that I was, I was able to cope. I mean, it was, it was nice in the sense that I actually, for a change, got to spend more time with family. Uh, funnily enough, I know that hasn't been a lot of other people's experiences, but I mean, because we were home. Are you talking about family, me and the kids, or are you talking about other family? Well, no, I'm talking about you and the kids. Okay. <laughs> but, no, but I, I certainly, 
I certainly agree with you. And for me, 2020 has been all about ignorance is bliss. I think I'm the most ignorant person there is. I, I haven't followed the news once, probably, the whole, all of after the lockdown, 2020. Not that I was very... Not that I was following it so much before, because I think that recently, I think it's just become like... It's like bad news after bad news after bad news. So I prefer to keep away from it. But it's like, literally, I felt so, so stupid that I just basically don't know anything anymore. I felt very ignorant. I don't think everybody was talking about like even the elections. I don't think I was even aware of what was going on in the elections. <laughs> it's a good thing I knew Joe Biden was running against Trump. Otherwise, I had no idea. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the good thing about 2020, I personally thought it wasn't going to last as long as it did. You remember I kept on saying summer 2020, mm. it's going to be perfect, yeah, you fine. You were making plans in March. <laughs> I think that it was a good thing that it didn't pan out that uh, that tw summer 2020 was okay because given the fact that I gained an incredible amount of weight on my ass and hips during you, COVID, you, you, wait, you didn't, you didn't no, weight. wait, wait. I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror in uh, when we were at the beach. So the good thing was that nobody was really at the beach. So I could just like be alone in that awful fat person's bathing suit. Oh my God, that was just so depressing. But yeah, so in a way that probably worked to my advantage. So that's a good thing. But I think I, I, you know, because I think I consider myself generally introverted and not as sociable as other people. Like my sister, I find her much more sociable. So for me, I thought this would be a nice break to not have to do the social obligations that we have to do in Egypt, which is quite frequently. So I liked that about 2020. But actually, I realized after three months of it, I was going to go mad. It's like it's one thing that you make the choice not to socialize with people. It's the other. It's another thing entirely when you're forced to not socialize with anybody, and it just feels just like so isolated. You feel so isolated, and I guess I got to focus on other things, and I got to focus on reading more, maybe spending more time with the kids, and kind of bonding with them, which is it's such a cute age. I must admit, they're what like. They were, they were, they had just turned two when the lockdown happened. Yeah, they were two and uh, two and three months, and now they're turning they're turning three uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so actually, it was a nice time. Yeah, we got lucky. It was a nice time to hang out with them, actually, and uh, yeah, interact. And we're lucky that we get to send them. I mean, daycare started in September, so we got to send them. I know we keep on going back and forth about shall we send them? They start this week, right? They start again daycare this week. So we keep on going back and forth. Should we send them? Should we not send them? I personally think we should send them because it's, you know, they're bored at home and it's just sad that they can't interact with other kids. So that's my opinion. Okay, so now what was the worst thing about 20? Do we say the worst thing? Or yeah, we, we talk said about the, the, worst. We the said best the worst. thing. What was the best thing for you about well, 20? We, we, we said a bit of both already. Okay, but yeah, I mean, you did. Um, it's true. It's spending time with your wonderful wife. Absolutely. And the wonderful children. And the wonderful children. Um... You know, I mean, to be to be to be honest, I mean, look, I mean, it was a pretty shitty year. I mean, it was nice in some. I guess, I mean, what you the nice things you're able to take out of it. I mean, for me, I think that was I think that was kind of it. Um, I would have wanted to do more. I mean, so I'm not going to say that there was terrible things. I mean, you know, like you said, we were lucky in the sense that um, you feel like it's been somewhat mild here, uh, yeah. as opposed to what you see on the news elsewhere. Um, you know, we, we haven't had reported officially tens of thousands of cases a day. We, we've only ever gotten to like one, one and a half thousand cases a day, which obviously everyone knows here in Egypt probably isn't true. Yeah, probably isn't entirely accurate. But, uh, but, but I mean, you know, uh, I, I, I think that we were, we were locked down in March, uh, for a month or two. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, work stopped pretty much. And I think that, uh, obviously uh, the majority of people here are not able to sustain themselves on a daily basis without their livelihoods. And I think the government recognized that. And I think that uh, that's why I don't think we're going to see another lockdown here. You don't think there'll be a lockdown in 2021 here? No, I don't think that there will be. 
I think there might be some curfews. I think there might be some restrictions, but I don't think they're going to lock down. But the curfew is like 11 o'clock at night. That's hardly a curfew. Yeah, exactly, which is why it's, 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 it's more flexible here. Okay, so for 2021, you don't think it's very bleak for Egypt, at least? Look, I think that, I mean, we're going we're gonna, to, you're going to keep hearing about more and more people, you know, getting uh, COVID-19 or COVID-20 or whatever it is. Um, uh, and I think that you're going to sort of, you know, be making your own decisions regardless of what the government says you should or should not do. You know, I think that if, uh, because before in March where they're saying it was very serious, I mean, I, I didn't really know, and I didn't know of anyone who had it personally. Now... I know maybe in the last three, four weeks, I know five or six different people that I personally know that have gotten it. And I know a bunch of other people uh, that I sit with regularly also have five or six of the people that they directly know. So it just seems to be getting closer and more inevitable. It's weird too. Also, you are actually, you have something very exciting for 2021. You're starting a new job. That is true. And so you're starting this new job this week. And so after taking a week off, finally, after... You've been in that job for like 12 years. And so I think it's, I'm very happy for you to have a new job and to have a new, something new to look forward to. Something I think will be nice and challenging for you. So you're, you're, it's good for you, but because of this whole COVID thing, do you think you guys are going to be at work five days a week in the office? Um, I don't know. We've just been given a list of, um, a list of do's and don'ts in the office, which now include having to wear a mask. Uh, all day long all day long and 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 and, and to not remove to, to not to not remove um for any reason and we have to you know the usual stuff you have to sanitize uh, you know every three seconds three seconds you know frequently and like you know if you're there you're, anytime you enter exit the building your, your temperature is going to be monitored and if if someone sees you sneeze basically they're going to send you home mm. so by the way i think this is very good i think this this has taught people to be better with their hygiene in Egypt. So now people hopefully will use soap and running water after they use the loo, okay? Oh after they go God, to the bathroom. Disgusting. Yeah. So I think that's going to be fun for you. I, I think it's the right time for me to, to start something, uh, something different. And I'm, uh, I'm excited about the opportunity, obviously a little apprehensive about, uh, you know, starting something new after 12 years. And tomorrow is my first day, so I'm, uh, I'm a little nervous, I have to say. But you know, excited also. Also, I mean, it's it's a good thing that now you have also something to fall back on. You have like a part-time job, another part-time job, which is being a podcaster with me. Part, I don't know about part-time job, but... Uh, so you can, I can, I would be willing to have you on more regularly. Oh, thank you very much. That's very gracious of so, you. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking, going back to the Prince and Harry, Meghan Markle uh, podcast. Yes. Okay, because that got me to th- thinking. I was... I was more interested, I felt it was like, just more like tame and like, wh- I thought, what? You know what? Wait, I, I, wait, I, I thought they no, were trying, I, 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 I want to say something, I, I have say, an opinion okay, about say. this. I thought that they were trying maybe too hard, look. To be thoughtful? Maybe, something like that. I mean, to be honest, I mean, they seem like they're interesting people, you know, uh, he's, was. Well, not from that podcast, Prince, I seem more interesting than them. Prince of England and, uh, and, and Meghan Markle from Suits. Um, you know, I mean, I think that I would have personally wanted to hear like, yeah, stuff that's more personal about that, like what they're thinking, what they're doing, how their 2020 was, what they're thinking for 2021, um, as opposed to just like hosting a bunch of, uh, you know, other interesting people and hearing their opinions. Yeah. I'll tell you, I personally thought we were going to be hearing more about the behind the scenes of Megan and Harry and how they're coping with their first year and second year of parenthood. That's what I was hoping, of course, because... But maybe because... that's like, that's private information for them. Maybe. No, it I shouldn't mean, it be. would have been nice if they come out and talked about you know, their position, like, uh, you know, vis-a-vis uh, their, uh, the queen. Vis-a-vis the queen? No, that's not interesting. That's not important. We don't care. We want to know who farted first in front of who. We want to know who was okay pooping in the bathroom when the think, other one I was still think... in... It, within their vicinity we want to know has that even happened yet have they even farted in front of each other yet i don't think prince harry's ever farted in his life um he doesn't seem like a farter to me farter. i mean he might he might yeah because he probably eats clean food so he probably doesn't have all this gas all the time but mm. i i don't know about that it seems to be everybody has gas naturally of course yes so naturally <laughs> that's what i was more interested in i was like i was interested in like 
you know, he annoys her because he watches Downton Abbey too often. <laughs> or he watches... Or she likes to watch reruns of Suits. <laughs> <laughs> or he likes to watch and Friends. And his favorite character is Joey. He's privately jealous of Harvey Specter. Harvey Specter? Oh, Harvey yeah. Specter is the lead character in Suits. He wears an amazing suit. But he wasn't the one who had a relationship with Megan on... on on the show, right? No, it was his it's the other one. It was his assistant, but Harvey was Harvey was very cool. I need to watch that show, and I know you're a huge fan of it. But like, yeah, th that was what I was more looking for. I mean, because I wanted to know how are they? No, really, I'm wondering how do they cope? How are they coping with motherhood? I mean, she seemed to at one point have a hard time with it, and I'm sure, like we all do, we had a hard time. I mean, now looking back at the first year, I think I was. So, I think that my first year was so traumatizing for me with the kids, with the twins. So, I'm assuming that, and I'm wondering what were her hard, hardships because she is able to, she should have better help, I'm assuming. Obviously, she must. So, I'm assuming that it must be a little bit easier or is it not really easier? Is it every Does every mother have those anxieties and those fears and those worries? Plus, being in the limelight, and, you know, I mean, because we don't know about that. What is this obsession that you have with people farting in front of each other when they fart and poo and, and their bowel movements? I don't, I don't understand this. It's because, remember, it took me like, I hated going on vacation with you for such a long time because I didn't, I didn't want to be stuck with you in, in, in a hotel room and having to, to use the bathroom. So I had to make up some excuse like, oh, I forgot something upstairs. So, yeah, I had, I had this thing and like... Sleeping at night, you know, like... <laughs> okay, let's not talk about that. My ideal scenario would, would be for us to each have our own bathroom, of course, because I like that. Okay, now it's... Now after what? We've been together... We've been married for nine years and together for almost 11. I think now I've kind of gotten over that hurdle. Yeah, you certainly have. But, but, but if it... Sometimes, like, I'm like, oops, you walked in and I... Well, I don't, I don't fart. But anyways, if it ever happens, it's like I'm really, you. really, really embarrassed, <laughs> as you know. But I don't think, uh, yeah, so I am obsessed with that. Maybe because for me, it's like such a, like a... That was an issue for you. It was an I, issue I, I, for I, me. I do remember. You wouldn't, uh, you'd have to forget hotel rooms. You wouldn't poo in the same house as me. Yeah, it's true. But mind you, I'm one of those people that, till now, I can't poop like in the office or anywhere else. I have to... I have to go to the bathroom in my own home. I can't go anybody. I can't go anywhere else. Hmm. Can you just I poop pre anywhere? I, pre I prefer not to. I mean, I pre but I mean, you know, that's, that's a, I mean, such a sounds like such a what's the word? It's such a luxury, obviously. You know, to be able to poo in your own, <laughs> to I know. poo in your own bathroom whenever you want. Okay, so do you think like I was curious to know like. What does their bedtime routine look like? Is it like they look so nice and pristine? Or is there like, is their son like running amok in the house and they're like running after him? Do they order McDonald's? No, they're not McDonald's people. They're more refined than that. They're, yeah. So what do you think they, what do you think their choice of takeout is? Sushi and sashimi. No, I don't think so. Maybe she, maybe she seems like a sushi and sashimi person. <laughs> what does he seem like? Oh no, she seems like a vegan. Vegan? He seems more like a vegan than her. No, to me. I don't think. You think he doesn't eat? What's it called? Fish and Is chips? it called? No, no, no. That other one. Is it beef Wellington? Beef no, Wellington. no, no. Oh, he shepherd's seems... pie. No, he seems. Yeah, he could definitely seems like a beef Wellington kind of guy. I'm sure he's not going to let go of his. He's not going to be a vegan, of course not. She could be because she's a yogi, isn't she? I have no idea. Anyways. Yeah, they're a nice couple. They look like a cute couple. Do you think they have any weird habits? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I wake up sometimes and you're like sprawled on the couch watching TV with your hand in your crotch like Al Bundy. Do you think he does that, or is he more refined than that? <laughs> uh, I, I can't see him sticking his hand down his crotch. I can see him sticking his hand down maybe his, his pajama jacket. Yes. Oh, God. And do you think he, she annoys him? Yes. But of course secretly, he wants but, but secretly. I think she secretly annoys him. 
and he's too nice to say anything. That's what I think. What do you think is in store for 21, 2021 for our podcast and their podcast? Um, I, I say I... we do a challenge with them. <laughs> I say we challenge them. Challenge them to a... challenge them to talk about their, 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 the their journey, the behind the scenes, <laughs> their bowel movements, and the behind the scenes stuff that doesn't. We don't want. We're not interested in hearing about all that. Like, you know that like. <sighs> Get real. This is what it's all about. We want to get real. In 2021, we want to have honest conversations. Not this like... Yes, that's <sighs> true. I, 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 I agree with you. It would be nice to, uh, to, to get to know famous personalities more personally. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's why I'm trying. I want people to get to know me more. But there is a danger in that. I mean, one of the things that you know, makes a famous, no, it doesn't make them, but one of the, one, you always like idolize a famous, you don't idolize them, but like, no, I disagree with you. I disagree with you because I follow people on Instagram and I think it's really, really nice. I mean, I find it, I, I find it, it's difficult to, to like have all of your like stuff like aired out in public, but I think it's kind of nice to see everybody's, their, 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 their flaws and their good sides, because you kind of get to, it's like you get to know the person and you kind of relate to them. Everybody's relatable in some in some way. I I I refuse to I refuse to believe that they're they don't have the same vulnerability as Brene Brown says as and or like emotional let's say baggage or issues that other pe- normal people have. And I find it let's say I find it that's what I find a little bit harsh about people when they kind of expect celebrities to be better than others but they're not because they all experience we can we all experience the same emotions so i i personally i am telling them i think harry and megan if you're out there and if you're listening please get more real with your podcast okay because then we're gonna have no competition in 2021 me and you have yes, some. less guests more farting please less what less guests and more farting yes yes i agree Anything you would like to tell them, Hazem? No, something I'd like to tell you. I mean, I think that um, if you take a guy like Brad Pitt, for example, and, you know, you, uh, you talk to him on something like this, and then, you know, you find out about his bowel movements and, like, when he farts and what he likes to eat and that, I mean, I, I guarantee you're never really going to look at him the same way. No, I don't want to. You're missing the plot. I don't want to know when he poops and when he doesn't poop. I'm just saying I wanted to be, I wanted to, I was expecting the podcast and the cute interaction as people mentioned it. Like that was one of the headlines. I think it was on, in Hello Magazine or something. Anyways, I assume that cute interaction is basically them talking about themselves, like talking, like having a cute banter between them and kind of like talking about the real stuff, not saying... Not talking about Brene Brown or Deepak Chopra. No offense to them because I absolutely love Brene Brown. And I love Deepak Chopra too. So I've read a lot of these people's books. Elton John, one of my favorites. Like they even, they didn't even really speak about what their... Their personal feelings. Their personal feelings about 2020 and what they expect in 2021. Um, So I think they should, I mean, they're already in the limelight they might as well i mean it's not going to make any difference if they say like maybe they don't realize how important they are or how uh, how famous they are why would they get are a you bunch, kidding me why would they get a bunch of other famous people to give their opinions and only maybe have it, because they didn't want, maybe actually good thing you mentioned that maybe they don't want it to be about them only maybe they think that that's being like maybe maybe, maybe they that's maybe, what it is. maybe they felt as as high profile uh, characters that it was their responsibility for their first podcast to talk about something important, which was obviously the last year. Okay, well, I think that they should get a little bit more personal and maybe not the whole podcast to be personal, but like a little bit of it so that we kind of get a glimpse into the real them. Because, I don't know, I think it's important now for people to show their real side, the true side, because, I don't know, I, I, I'm, well, as you know, that that's my, what, the premise of this podcast of my podcast anyways any last words that you'd like to add i would like to know what she actually thinks of gabriel macht in his uh, in his suits in uh, in suits 
Who is that? It's Harvey, Harvey, Harvey. No, no, give us some background. Not everybody watches Suits. So it's Suits, it's the, it's the, the, that, that series that she was in, right? And who is that guy? Harvey Specter. He's the main character. That's his name on the show, right? That's his name yeah, on the okay, show. Yeah, okay, because I watched a couple of episodes. I want to know what he's actually like, because he seems like a cool cat in that thing. And I, and, and she obviously will know. I, 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 that's what I want to know. For okay, I, so I, you're, I, you're man crushing on uh, Harvey Specter. I now. suppose a little bit. Okay. So if, uh, Megan, if Megan's listening to this, could you please connect my husband with Harvey Specter? Because he <laughs> wants to know who his tailor is. <laughs> And and I want to know. Who, I want to, and I, I want to know, know if he if farts he's as in front cool of his girlfriend he is on the show, or if that's just for show. That's what I want to know. And if he is as cool as he is on the show, then I want to know if Harry is just a little bit jealous. No, that's a little drama. Okay, fine. So okay, so we put our thing out there. Hopefully, you and Harvey Specter will get connected at some point in yes. 2021. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Cool. Thanks for being on and. Good luck to everybody, and hopefully 2021 will be much better than 2020. And I think that we should all stay positive and definitely have like all these positive affirmations for 2021. And I think if collectively, like millions around the world have these like positive affirmations about 2021, I think we can make it positive. We can make it a good fucking year. Let's fucking hope so. Okay. All Bye. Right. Bye-bye.